We're going to move on to the lathe work for our, our nut right here. Get her chucked up in the six jaw. And we'll do our drilling, boring, and internal threading. Check it with an indicator. Now I was out a few. That's all right. What we're going to end up doing is facing this. It's, it's thicker than I want. We're going to face it. We're going to do all our machining and then we'll face it to make sure this face is true with the threads. And then we're going to use our thread gauge to, we're going to screw it onto our thread gauge and face the other side. So if it's out a few thou, it's no big deal on this one here. Looks like two. But of course I'm trying to get it closer. Right, there's one and a half. We'll, we'll just leave it. Good enough is good enough, right? Hey, that looks pretty good. Look how close I had my center point there. Nice. See how my new Cleveland drill drills. Brand new grind, man, gotta love it. Let's see if we can find us a drill bit. Okay, well that's one in 15, I think what I'd like is a two inch, remember where two inches in there somewhere, the one in seven eight, that was a drill that I used a lot, I always gravitated to this one an inch and a quarter. two inch that I really like. There's one of the two inches right there. Ooh. I don't like to grind on that one there. There's a lot of these drills that's in here like this. This is something that was given to me. To put it in the drawer here, you know. And then mine get buried. Well I guess it's a good time as ever. Maybe I'll just take this two inch right here, this is a Hercules, and I'll put a fresh grind on that thing. One in 5764, so that's got a nice grind on it right there. It's a nice clean drill, that's another one somebody's giving me right there. Clee Forge, that's a good drill. Alright. That's the drill gauge I like to use whenever I sharpen my drills. This gives you your proper angle for jobber drills right there. We're going to see if we can improve on that right there.
don't know how good this drill is going to be. It's it's grinding like it's kind of soft. I've run into drill bits like that before where they just won't hold an edge. They just burn up. I don't know. We're going to give it a shot though. Just getting it roughed out because the angle is way off. got it right where it needs to be now it's just getting it cleaned up just one flute here still got a lot on that corner there all right i think we can finish it off right here on the fine side and it'll be about ready to go Looking at the relief angle behind the cutting edge there and trying to determine if it's going to rub or not. I want to make sure you get enough clearance there, but you don't want to give it too much clearance. That allows the cutting edge to break off the chip easier. It's just a funky drill, man. It's got a weird texture to it. I'm gonna try that. We're gonna give it a shot and see if it'll drill. A little bit better shot of the, the grind there for you. Feels like I got it. First try. You'll know if it's rubbing because it doesn't want to go in there. Feels pretty even too. Let me bring it down. Made it. Let's see what we drilled it to. See how far off my grind was. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Two thousandths. Two inches, two thousandths. Are you kidding me? There's three thousandths. <laughs> that, wow, I wasn't expecting that because it was still drilling a little bit heavy on one side once it got in there. Let's see what our grind looks like. You see some heat build up there. A little bit more there than, than on that one, but it's got some magnetism in there. Well, anyway, there was a successful grind and a drilled hole. So our bore size is going to be 2 inch, 142 thou. We've got 140 thousandths to come out of it. one 
142 and I'm at 142 and a half so a little bit over there got a chamfer tool there we're gonna hit both sides give it a nice little bevel let's go ahead and hit this side so I run it through and I just eyeball the, the tool bit run it and then stop it and then look at it okay all right so I'm swapping my compound swinging it around to the uh, to the left here that's the style that I like to this is the technique that I like to use we got a scribe line right there for uh, 30 And I'll need to re-square up my tool post here because it's going to be off just a little bit. So I'll indicate it so that we're square with the work here. We've got our cross slide set to a zero. I've got an indicator here now so that we have a way to back it. We have a way to back this measurement up. And we're going to go ahead and bring this compound back to touch off. Now we want to zero this guy right here. We'll just feed in two right there, and then we're going to make a scratch pass and check our pitch. Okay, we verified we're cutting 12. All right, so this is our thread gauge that we made, and I want to make sure that this is threaded to fit that good. And another way you can figure your depth on your compound in feed here, take your calculator and go 0.75 divided by the pitch, which is 12, 0.0625. That's going to be your, your compound in feed there. There and about. Now, it may not be exact that, but that's, by theory, that's your depth. So let's go ahead and scoot it up. Let's run it. Uh, we're running at 350. Let's see how that does. 10, 20. There's nothing to crash into, so take it nice and easy on the way out there. 10, 20. I can hit any line on the thread dial because of it being a 12 pitch. Uh, 12 is divisible by 4, which is a lead screw pitch here. Alright, so that's only 50 on the compound empty. But I want to go ahead and check. Start checking this. I don't want to overshoot it. Still got a little ways to go. Getting real close. 
I had to make a few real light spring passes, and this is the first time that it's screwing all the way in there. It's a very close fit. This is the way I was wanting it. Shoulders out. Okay. That's a machinist fit. There's no wiggle at all. That's what we want. So now we're going to go ahead and clean our face up. Long feed, I want it. It's looking good there. So we're going to make a little detour right here. I want to use this tool right here to come in there and cut my bevel right there. Use that angle if this tool is squared up to it. Use that angle right there. This tool right here is too big. to. It'll fit in the tool holders, but you can't get it down to center height. I need to take 3 16 off this, so one inch shank, and I have to drop these one inch shanks down 3 16 in order to get center line on this lathe here. So we're going to use the shaper and see if I can cut this tool steel and bring it down. Okay, he's handled it just fine.
go. There's one cut down tool holder. My high speed tool did a good job cutting this. We had no problems at all. I did slow my speed down. It looks good. All right, we got our modified tool in our tool post here, so let's use this and we're gonna cut a bit of an angle on this, on this hex nut. What I usually like to do is just cut it until the angle just intersects here on that diameter. Just about there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to touch it one more time. And I think that'll work. I'll have to do some hand filing and get rid of the burrs there. We got our thread gauge chucked in there. I'm going to use that as a fixture to hold it so that we can finish facing out this side right here. And after doing some measuring, what I, what I would like to do is make this uh, 1 and 3 16 thick. The threads, once they're through the clapper, they stick out inch and an eight. So that'll give me a sixteenth of an inch to actually protect the inner threads there from uh, getting hit or anything like that. We'll just ring this thing up on here, just like that, and that's all we need. We got about 50 thousandths to come off this thing. I'm just going to take it into two cuts. this other side. All right, there we go. Now, one more place we need to deburr this inside where that thread is. I'm using a high speed tool for that to make use of that sharp ground edge there to try to eliminate any of the material rolling in on the thread. So I'll have a little bit of flapping and polishing I'll have to do right here with some emery. And generally, if you go in there with a carbide insert tool, as it's cutting, it's trying to roll that, that thin edge over there and you got another burr in there that you have to deal with. So that just kind of helps eliminate any problems. There we have it.
Okay, I've been working this <clears throat> this uh, fit on the, the nut and the bar, and I'll, I'll say that this is definitely a machinist fit because I have no room for play at all. I I put a little cutting oil on the threads, and and when I spin this on there, there's no movement for it to just free spin. I mean, it's just very little. It's it's on there. There's no rocking. So I really needed a little bit more clearance than that, but I think this will work. I'm just working it. I'm working it some to try to get the, the threads to kind of mate. I think we'll be okay right there. But it goes all the way back. It, all, it goes all the way on there just like it should. It'll probably sit on there about, about like that right there. But our next step is going to be to we need to drill our pilot hole for our tool bit. It's going to be for our half inch square square hole. And then we also need to uh, drill and tap for a set screw to retain the tool bit. All right, we found the center of the bar using standard edge finding methods with a half inch edge finder. And I've actually got the tool located three quarters of an inch from the end. And what that'll do is set my front cutting edge from the face of the nut to the front edge, 12 and a half inches. So that'll actually give me a total of 12 inch stroke there if I, if I need it. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna spot it and I'm gonna drill it with a pilot drill. So this is our square broach. This is what I'll use to make that hole square. This pushes down through there. And these always list the pilot hole, which is what the end has to start in right here. So this one is a 13, 30 seconds pilot. So we'll finish it out with our 13, 30 seconds drill. I'm going to take this angle mill right here, this is a carbide, and it comes to a sharp point. I'm going to use this like an engraving tool, and I'm going to come across here and scribe uh, four lines that whenever I set my tool in there, I can line up at least two of these edges to try to get it as square as I can. Well, there's our four lines. We'll see if I can get the cutter lined up on those. One last step here in the mill. We're going to drill and tap it for a set screw. I'm going to drill and tap it for a half 13. All right, there we go. So this is where I'm gonna to try to line up this cutter with my scribe lines there and give it a little tap in there to get it started. Then we'll go to the hydraulic press. I'm gonna hold most of the, I'm gonna hold the bar in a vise and then I'll hold the end out here with a, probably like a jack or something like that. Alright, 
getting in there pretty snug now so we'll go ahead and switch over to the press and press it in there I'm going to go ahead and start I'm go ahead and put some fresh oil on there and start pumping it That's a half inch tool bit and even though we broached the half inch it's still it's a very it's a very tight fit so I'm going in there and I'm just lightly filing it try to open it up just a little bit and where's one of those fancy die filers when you need one who was it that said that they aren't worth having? All right, well, despite not having a, an automatic filing machine, I was able to do it by hand. And I've got the tool bit fitting in there nice now. We've got the edges nice and deburred, filed them. And we are just about done with this thing. Well, I think it's finally ready to put it together for the first time. See how it looks, see how it fits. And I don't know if I've shown much of all this before, but we've already got this kind of cleaned up how, how I'm going to leave it just like so and of course that's cleaned up too so let's go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand this up I've already blown everything off make sure there's no chips that got on it go so that's gonna be it right there it's gonna mount up into that clapper box like so and this will hang out we'll be able to adjust it as we need to we got our tool bit that'll go in there Right.